So today's topic is today's topic is user management and V apps. So let me log in into V Center first. Anyway, yeah, this one that is not going to work, right? I forgot because. I'm on two different networks. Okay, let's go to Active Directory server. Okay, and let me log in into vCenter. It's okay. Let it let it come. Meanwhile, what I will do? I'll go to Active Directory. Okay, and go to Users. I will add few users here. Correct. And password. Audible. And one more user. Integration part we haven't tested, but let's try today. So that's okay. Also, I'll create groups. Like this, I have a couple of groups. I don't have any members at the moment. What I will do? Uh, that's okay. Let's try that later on. Once the vCenter is up and running, let's log into the vCenter. Hopefully, shared storage must be visible, otherwise we'll have to. Just a moment. Yeah, <clears throat> we are lucky today. Let's acknowledge these. Then, what I have to do, I have to enable, if I right click, new app it's there still i have to enable configure fully automated drs and ha both are turned on okay fine so no issues so what i will do let's try to understand let's try to understand First, what is V app? Any idea, Vivek?
Sunil. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Are they uh, inbuilt apps uh, inside a VMware? In the sense? In the sense, what? Can you be more elaborative? Okay. Like, uh, Like if we have one uh, application uh, license, for example, we do have a, a application license for a, a particular application and we can uh, run it in our environment on different machines. Okay. Like uh, it's a Citrix, we can say in Citrix, we get a VDI and their apps got pushed. So, those are uh, yeah, let's application see. virtual. I can say, yeah, VRP is pre configured virtual machine that packages application parameters that define operational details via package application with their required operating systems. Okay. See, VRP allows disparate virtual machines to work together in a stack of an application and supports cloud computing architectures. You can nest VRPs with the VRPs, set up VMware resource pools, deploy new VRP based on existing ones. And VRP operates on OVF standard and VRPs can be exported. It's okay. Imagine. Imagine I have three different virtual machines. What I will do, what I will do, I will rename them into a different form. Uh, where is the rename, man? Yeah. Okay. So, web app one dot. Can do that right okay and where is this yes application server one dot DB server one dot agree on this three different servers. Let me rename this in a different uh, then I have three different servers. Let me go back to data stores it is sitting on lun 20 and it is sitting on 10 and it is sitting on 30 right i have three vms sitting on three different data stores if i go back to the data store and check it out no the vm names are something different see on the front end you renamed it but on the back end it is still with the old name so what I will do, I will simply select this machine currently running on 30, right? Let me migrate storage only onto 10. Finish. Let's see. Done. Now, if I go to 10 and browse, you will see server got renamed. It means files got renamed inside even those files got renamed folder is renamed and the other all the files got renamed okay whenever whenever you rename the server at front 
the backend host entries or backend entries will not change right so what i will do i will take a db migrate migrate on 30 finish let's see you see now it is renamed to 30 I mean, that means migrated to 30 and it got renamed something which is running on 20 is still vmc how to how to how to go to that's okay so what i will do my aim is v apps let's leave other things migrate i'll put it on 10 once it is renamed to 10 you go to 10 and you'll see two machines web and app it's okay now three machines are three machines got renamed and the back end the folders also got renamed otherwise it is hard to remember what is the front end inventory name and what is the back end folder name you never know right so whenever whenever you rename the virtual machine at front um, that means it, you are changing the inventory name Please do a storage V motion so that the backend entries will also get renamed. Clear? Now let me go to cluster. I have all the parameters configured. Right click, right click, and new resource pool. Let's wait. too much time so okay, cancel let me start have a create v app okay so new v app this option guides you through creating a new v app you will be able to customize cpu and memory that's fine next Happen man. Video is not working. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. So let me try once again if it works well. Otherwise, we'll use the older one. Yeah, it's working now. So what I will do. Uh, Give me some project name. Okay. Uh, new project dot VMC dot net project. Let's say simple. Give the name dot net project. machines and I'm not I'm not keeping any reservations I'm just leaving you can you can put if you have if you have around 2 TB or 10 TB of your RAM and or around 60 or 120 CPUs in, a, in your VMware vCenter cluster how much how much CPU memory that you want to reserve or allocate for this we have to run that you can define here it's okay finish that's it one v app has been created now if i click on v app there's nothing called a lot of options so what i will do i'll simply drag and drop machines into v app 
done now i'll go to configure configure and we have properties and key id key instance i need yeah vms let's see all these part of vms useful permissions it's okay i'm not talking about these permissions i'm looking for <coughs> let me right click edit settings yeah edit settings start order okay First, I need to power on this web server or order is this. First, DB server will power on and then application server will power on and then database server will power on. You understood the hierarchy? A minute so the hierarchy is like this no need to mention the delay when the tools are ready it can power on other vms so if i check if i check check this mark what if i enable that check mark what happens whenever you start the app it will automatically start db and then after two minutes you can you can specify the delay it's it's okay right and app server will start and then db server sorry web server will start in a sequence and and if you want if you want you can specify ips and you can specify the product details so what happens what happens these three servers are these three servers are pre-configured applications as you mentioned vivek these are thin applications whatever you're talking about it has everything inside right and whenever you turn on it will automatically pick up some of the ip from dscp and they will start done now if i say What happens first it will start db and wait for two minutes and it will start application and wait for two minutes it will start web application after that after that if you have a v cloud director configured properly in this in the same screen you will see your v app is ready it will give you one url or it will give you one ip of your web application server you take that ip and start working on your development part understood and in the evening once you once your development testing uat whatever the, whatever the thing that you are doing once that is done you simply turn off your app no need to touch the servers you cannot touch these servers you will get only this access application access so simply turn off the app that will automatically turn off all the three tiers in the back end getting my point yes so for that for that purpose you can you can create a v app and deploy some virtual machines on the back end or some 
thin apps on the back end that will automatically publish the application what you are looking at in the front end it's as simple as that if you wait for two minutes it will start second machine and wait for two minutes you can you can skip the delay maybe one minute delay so rather than keeping up two two minutes you can keep it for 30 seconds or something and it will automatically start the rest of the machines okay once the app is ready on your screen you'll get some output summary let's see what it says still vrp is starting currently vrp is utilizing two data stores because the vms are spread across two different data stores and monitor if i go to monitor if there are any trigger issues and cpu memory allocation it will show you see the second machine is started now and it will see how much cpu how much ram it is sharing in between all of them and memory sharing and the storage and current utilization so specific virtual app so if you don't want to buy if you don't want to buy the whole vmware infrastructure for your development project what you have to do you have to come with hey can i have these three these three servers can you create an application for me v app and put some reservation all the three servers if you run under 10 gb ram and 8 cpu i'm fine with it so what i will do i'll simply create a v app and put a reservation here A reservation here and then memory i'll put a reservation here and soft limit hard limit then i'll click okay that means for this particular project or for this particular customer i am dedicating 8 gb memory and sorry 10 gb memory and 8 cpu that's it nothing else how much storage the storage limit is you have dedicated one data store that has that has three or four VMs what he has given that it utilizes storage from that particular data store. Okay, and and if if users are facing or a front end applications are facing slowness, then user has to request more CPU and RAM on their V app, then only they, they, it can be minimized. Otherwise he has to face the slowness because it won't allow you to expand or utilize more from the available resources even your cluster is 90 percent free but your v app cannot go beyond the allocated limit okay instead of virtual machine what you can do simply create a boundary of few machines and hand over to customer now imagine sunil is the owner of this application okay let's see let's see i want to i want to give access to sunil i want to give access to sunil only on this application because he is the owner of this application so how to do that go to dotnet project permissions okay add permission Just give me one moment. Administration. Global permissions. These are the global permissions. Okay. User access. Single sign on. Configure. Active directory domain. to active directory domain administrator I'm, I'm i'm moving on to user management okay Right? Because 
you want to bring your users from active directory not from the local see if it works well let me let me go to administration console Administration. Administration. Policies. It's okay. I want to go to. Just give me a moment. And now let me try. This is one more try. If it works well, we are lucky enough. Right. Users and groups. Not normal these users and groups. Configuration. Active directory domain. Join. Oh no, 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 no. See, spelling mistake. Look at this is the domain. So let me join to the domain. Let's try. <clears throat> Perfect. Now it's joined to the domain and identify sources. <clears throat> Let me go to computers. a moment yeah it is there entry has been created if you look at ECS production ECSA right it is there it is in the domain so what I have to do I have to restart the I have to restart the vCenter just to reflect the changes so what I have to do Go back to my original ESXA server and I will reboot my vCenter. Just give me like five minutes once it is rebooted and then we'll continue. Otherwise, we'll create a local users and I'll show you how to do that. Give me like five minutes. Once it is rebooted, we can continue with the user management. Okay. Right. Come on. Restart. Let's see. Yeah. Let it reboot. It will take a couple of minutes. Once it is rebooted, I will go ahead and continue. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll just pause the recording. See, it's rebooting. So, meanwhile, what I will do, I'll go back to my system and I'll go to users. 
I'll create some test users. Or else what I'll do? L1 admin. Okay. L1 admin. and create one more user l2 admin and one more last user l3 admin because I have I have to assign group permissions right for that it make rejoin right I have three different users and two individual users I'll go to group and members add l1 right apply I'll go to group members add L2. Check the names. Right. And I'll go to L3 admins. Done. So these are the three different groups I have created. Imagine and also two different application users or two different uh, main users. Or individual users I can say now once once this got rebooted what I will do just reload it's still loading so just we'll just wait for a few minutes once the V center is up then we'll go and add the permissions for those users and see if it works okay just wait for a few minutes let me log in now directory domain you see now edit domain is reflecting okay it's fine so what I will do I will go and add roles and permissions i do have a couple of roles let's see what kind of roles that we have Go to home and western clusters v app permissions yeah i do have a couple of permissions here okay <clears throat> so let me add a permission for this no still not populating let me go back to administration now you see now i got the roles populated and global permissions okay add it's not global permission route let me go to users and groups
add a group configuration identify sources add identity source add identity source okay and now we got the new source for your users and go to users and groups and you see third one mavericloud.com domain now what i will do i'll go to roles i do have a roles here so let me go back to Use user permission management we're discussing about in that what you call it as RBAC. RBAC means role based access control. How to do that? I have a vCenter, it has everything inside, and I do have Active Directory, right? Which can integrate with this. And imagine I have three different groups, three different teams L1, L2, L3. So, what I did, I created a users on Active Directory and I will give such a permission so that L1 can go and do some task. If, if L1 team logins, they can only perform certain tasks. What kind of task? Let's say monitoring. Okay. And L2 deploy virtual machine, delete virtual machine, these things. L3 everything. Right? So L1 only read only permission I'll give. L2 virtual machine permissions I'll give. L3 full permissions I'll give. How to? I'll go back to the portal and read only it is already there full permissions it is already there All right so virtual machine user this i will give it to l2 okay or else or else you want to create a custom roles okay custom roles virtual machine management what all the things that the person can do is select okay no 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 i don't want to allow him to snapshot management he cannot do the snapshot management and he cannot do the replication management he can only do certain task next role name l2 admin role this will be approved l2 admin role permissions Okay, finish. So what you can do in this portal, you have n number of things to do. But L2 admin, what what he can do? He can perform certain task. So I define here. If you want to edit, you can always edit and alarms select next. He can do alarms as well. He can check the alarms. Edit. He can manage ports distributed switch okay like that you can add and remove the permissions related to any specific component okay so this is role and rbac means role based access control so for this particular role for this particular admin group i am assigning a permission how to do that let me go to permissions global permissions add from Maverick cloud okay l2 admin and l2 admin role that's it 
understood and add memory cloud l1 admin read only read only yeah read only permission and l3 we can add a groups as well that is not discovering l3 i'm sorry go to domain l3 l3 admin administrator permission full permissions administrator has full permission right i have given three different permissions to three different teams or users agree now now also go to host and clusters where is host and cluster host and clusters this v app is who is the owner of this v app and vivek vivek is the owner of this v app that's it done i give multiple permissions let's go ahead and test vivek permission first okay can we do that let me log out <clears throat> let me log out just give me one moment i'll i'll put it on And what is the username? I'm sorry. Yeah, Vivek at the rate. This is the user, right? And the password. Login. You will see only V app, nothing else. See, you don't have a privilege to view this content and expand. Expand. If you click on it, I'm sorry, you cannot. I'm sorry, you cannot. And if you click on it, you will see full permission on VM. And you cannot view the machine, by the way. If he, he go to machines, no, he can simply start and start the app. Start and stop the app, that's it. You understood what I'm trying to explain here? Power on, power off. That's it. Every day he can log in and power on, power off. You don't know what is there in the back end. Right. You don't know. You don't know what is there in the back end. What is the network? What is the what in which data store his VMs are running and what all those VMs? Nothing. He cannot see any of those things. Only his permissions. He can see who else has the permission on this VRP. He cannot even see that. Okay. And he can he can do everything whatever whatever he want to do on the app. Okay. He can reconfigure and you can edit settings and change the order that's it that's it edit settings he can change the order reboot order and all but he cannot i'm sorry my, my bad he cannot because vms are not visible here right so that's it this is only the permission vivek will get if he log in with his id now let's log out and log in with l1 admin right l1 admin l1 admin at the rate now you are using your own your own custom domain What the message you got? Okay. L2 admin. Let's try. Uh, 
how come m3 admin let me close It might require one plugin or something. Oh, it cannot go to internet. It's okay. Let me go back. Okay. And go to. administration and global permissions they should have if i go to host and cluster okay and permissions or v center in v center permissions let me add a permission here i gave them a global permission still let's try l3 admin administrator okay so i have uh, maybe i have to add it here at v at v, at v center level right let's try with l3 admin l3 admin at let's see now yeah i need to add a permission at v center level see western clusters oh, no, he should see everything there is no read only permission, right? Uh, it's not like that. So, just a moment, man. We'll test one last scenario and then we'll close it. VSPR, is that it? Dot local. I guess I need to propagate that access to child level. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Login IR. Copy link address. I cannot even copy. Man. Come on, come on. Not logged in administrator at the rate vspr dot local okay and at cluster edit so he should see yeah here 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 at host level yes let's go ahead and try now if you actually I, I defined in global permission it should reflect I don't know why it is not reflecting so that's fine l3 admin at let's see Okay, now you see everything is now reflected. 
now he has got full full permissions okay he has a full permission l3 admin okay but l1 admin what i will do let me log out and log in back with oh, i should have given a permission here itself l3 has a full permission right he can change the permissions even that's okay yes so one last try i'll give a read only access to everyone in l1 admin i can i can even add a groups but i haven't seen the groups are not populating here let's see couple of things will do it quickly let's go back to administration and users and groups okay groups add a group No, no, no. Yeah. Such L3. Again. Normally, groups should populate man. Not coming up here, maybe. That's okay. Let's go back to the global permissions and L1 admin edit only permission to everyone that option I haven't selected that is a mistake I did okay now if I come here you will see l1 admin is showing here you'll see l1 admin is showing here so everywhere l1 admin will now pop up that is only the mistake we did right? you have to check mark that and you can even give a permission at individual VM level okay l1 admin at Now you'll see you have visibility for everything but everything is grayed out okay now you can see everything man every single component is visible you see right click power on grayed out okay everything is grayed out right click new virtual machine grayed out maintenance grayed out connection everything is grayed out because you have only read, read only permission right you cannot even delete nothing nothing you can do but you have full permission you can view everything okay if someone is a fresher and you want to assign a monitoring job for him you can give a l1 permission and ask him to log in morning and go to monitor and see if there are any issues reported here any triggered alarms or any events unwanted things that he noticed please report and send an email to your manager these kind of things that you can allocate to l1 admin that is read only and you can create a custom okay now you remember uh, what we did this is my vcenter and i said your backup server is something else okay backup server is something else it will initiate the backup and it will hand over to vcenter and esxa will perform the snapshot and it will it will give the uh, data to backup server and then it will copy the data and then remove the snapshot now backup server want to talk to vcenter every day for every backup let's say 500 vms are there it will it will try to talk to vcenter 500 times in a day so you need a user right otherwise how it will uh, connect so you can create one service account service account means it is also a user in active directory but backup admin or or backup user so this user can perform certain tasks inside the v center now you need to define your own role for that how, what kind of role let me go back to your v center once again and go to administration and roles okay why is this sometimes it will grade out oh yeah read only permission right my bad yes alone alone admin login yeah so last time also when i rebooted 
the permissions are not populating so i thought of again i lost the cursor spare dot local what happened man cool now let me go to host i'm sorry for not hosting clusters administration add uh, i need a certain access on virtual machine okay it can modify the create a uh, screenshot no 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 snapshot management it can do okay and storage okay storage storage we need a couple of other permissions data store update virtual machine files or something you need to you need to understand uh, what kind of permission that it requires and store cluster no what else yes xi host okay. reconfigure virtual machine the permission and select select the appropriate next for uh, backup user well, this will be used only for integration of backup tool with VMware that's it now what you can do you can go to here i can create one user okay where, where is the user and create a user net backup vc admin okay net backup vc admin Never expire password. Understood? Because that is used for daily usage service account. Done. That's it. Now I'll go to vCenter and I'll go to permissions. Add a permission. User. Net backup. VC admin. And you select the role. Where is my role? Backup user role. That's it. So I will I will add a permissions on vCenter for backup user, and they have to use on the backup tool. When they are configuring the backup tool, they have to use this username and password so that backup tool now can contact vCenter and get the whatever the information that it requires creating a snapshot taking a backup or removing a snapshot doing a restore all these things it can take into accountability with this user so whenever snapshot has been taken now you will see so and so user has initiated the snapshot so you can easily identify who is doing what here Understood? Hello. Yes. Okay. So this is how you can do the user management in VMware at various levels. Okay. You need you need any any queries or you need more more in detail. You can you can uh, practice it once when you are doing a practice. You can also add this vCenter into domain and uh, create some users and practice it on your own. Right. Any questions? Okay. No, sir. No? Oh, 
let me stop here